we come to your word this morning. And Lord, your word is truth and life to those of us who find it. Anoint your word to each and every ear and each and every heart in this room, that your word might come alive to us and that we might learn to use it when we need it the most in our lives. We ask this all in your precious name. Amen and amen. Let me ask you a question. Who loves to be alive? Anybody? Everybody? That's saying maybe not. <laughs> I mean, look at the alternative. <laughs> <laughs> so, the only reason you want to be alive is because you don't want to be dead. <laughs> I know I love to be alive, even with all your problems, even with all the things that go wrong in your life, that when you have expectations that don't get fulfilled, there's one thing that you can actually hold on to, and that is that you're alive. I mean, think about it. If you were never alive and you never knew what it was like to be alive, you could never know pain, or you could never know, you know, joy unless you've known pain, right? I mean, the distance between joy and pain, I don't think it's very far away. You could never know love unless, unless you've really known what it's like to be rejected in love. And so, in life itself, we find that these, these differences are what give us the ability to recognize I have life. And so the real question is, is what are you going to do with the life that you received? And the problem is, is that we've asked that question of ourselves ever since we realized, uh, wow, I'm alive. <laughs> you know, when you're a little kid, all of a sudden, you, you know, you start to realize you're conscious of the fact that, you know, that you can talk, <laughs> you can hear, <clears throat> that you can explore things, that you can see things. Suddenly you realize that all these external things are causing you the ability to find out that you're alive. And then you wonder, what is the purpose of my life? What am I going to use my life for? And if you go out into the world, you will see so many different things that make up or people have come up with that is the purpose of their life. But what it all comes down to is that we are alive. Now, there's one thing as a human race that God has been trying so hard to bring us back to. And it's something that we fail to realize in our life. And that is that when God created the heavens and the earth, and he created man in his image and his likeness, I want to show you something. It's in Genesis. Some of you have heard it before. But the Lord brought it to my attention today. <clears throat> and if I can see. <laughs> see, I'm alive. I know that I cannot see anymore. Because <laughs> I realize that I have mortal. <laughs> and my eyes are starting to go. <clears throat> it's in Genesis. If you guys want to read it, chapter 2. No, if you, or you can take a note of it. And you're going to hear a very strange scripture here. And I'm going to read chapter 2. I mean chapter 2, verses 4, 5, and 6. <clears throat> These are the generations of the heavens and the earth, when they were created in the day that the Lord God had made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist, there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And then in verse 7 it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. We don't realize how much power we have as human beings. What the Word is telling us here 
is that before there was all these things in the earth, what was missing was man to do what? To till the ground. Doesn't it say that? Every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was no man to till the ground. There was no rain and no man to till the ground. And so, what do we begin to realize as we realize who we are? We realize as kids that, you know something, if I begin, if I'm at the checkout counter with mom and dad, right, depending on which one I know has a softer heart, and if I want something, if I whine loud enough, what am I going to get? Me, a box of cereal. Well, that nice candy. I know that I used to love the candy along the shelves, you know, because they knew at the store that these kids would come in. <clears throat> and if you said, don't touch them, what happened? Touch them. <laughs> they touched them anyway, right? I want! <laughs> right? And then you get into the checkout counter and you're sitting there and you're about my age, what happens? When you hear those little kids screaming, can't they control them, kids? <laughs> What's wrong with them? <laughs> this is the story of our lives, isn't it? What we come to realize is, is that we, in, in, embedded into us, is this desire to have something, to be fulfilled by something. And we think, from a very young age, that if we want something, the only way that we'll have fulfillment in our life is if we get it. I want something, and we are not satisfied until we get it. And some of us will go to great lengths to be able to have those desires fulfilled. There is a hole in the human condition that is looking to be fulfilled. And that hole, guess what it's called? It's called desire. When you begin to realize that you're conscious, the first thing that you realize is that you want to be satisfied. You want to be filled. And all that happens by the time, time that you realize it to the time you are 20, 30, 40 years old, is that there's different ways to fulfill it, to fulfill this desire for whatever it is that you want in your life. But why do you want it? What are you really looking for? Listen. Every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was yet no man to till the ground. And then after that, what does he do? He, breathe, he creates man from what? The dust of the earth, doesn't he? And then he breathes into his nostrils the breath of life. And the word says that man becomes a living soul. You go and look up what that word soul means, you'll find out that it goes back to this. <laughs> to the mind. To consciousness. That you are a living, conscious, thinking human being. And now, remember there's a hole, isn't there? Listen to what it says. So, he makes this man. He breathes into his nostrils the best of life. And he said that before that, there was the, the, the ingredients that were necessary in the earth so that man could till the ground and the rain could fall. Right? The ingredients were there. They weren't yet there. So then God says, out of the... <clears throat> and the Lord God planted a garden east in Eden, and there he put the man... And he, that he had formed. 
And out of the ground made he the Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight. When man was put into the garden, what, what happened? Suddenly now, things began to grow. Out of the ground made the Lord to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord and, the, and a river went out from Eden to water the garden and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. And the name of the first one was Pazan, which is which compasses the whole land of Havilah. Well, I won't go into all the rivers, but I'll bring it down. And then the Lord God commands God commands man to. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of the of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou mayest not eat, for the day in which thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helpmate for him. And out of the midst, and out of the, and out of the garden the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Whatsoever Adam called them, every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, and to the fowls of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helpmate for him. What do you see? Adam was created with a hole in his heart. It was empty. You see, Adam needed one thing. He needed to be fulfilled, and he was looking for that. Isn't that like our own lives? We have this hollow hole in our heart that is looking to be fulfilled. And what are we calling that hollow hole? It's called desire. And what are we doing? We're out there looking for everything around us to fulfill that desire. And we cannot find it. Adam is exemplifying that exact same attribute. He's looking for a helpmate. He's looking for completion. He's looking to be fulfilled. And in the process of being looking for that fulfillment, God gave him the ability to do what? To name all the animals. Do you know that you name all the animals in your life and you don't even realize it? And what does it say? What he called them, they were. What he called them, they were. What you call things in your life, they are. And the things that you have eaten from, the things that you have received from in your life, is nine chances out of ten because you called them into existence. All the things in your life, all the things in my life are there because we have called it into existence. And because of that, we wonder why we haven't got that fulfillment in our life because we call the negative and we call the positive don't we? We can call a tame dog and we can call a, a, a... Katie's pretty tame, right? Hey, Katie. See? We'll call her black. <laughs> <laughs> or you have another one that could be like a lion, the beast of the field, right? Who wants to do what? To devour you, maybe. The king of the jungle. <laughs> goes out to get you. But who named it? Adam, right? And what does Adam mean? Adam means man. Mankind has the ability to create its own world. 
Now, God wants you to have that ability again. Do you know that? To be able to call your own world. But the first thing you have to do to be able to call your own world and to, re and to say, I'm alive. I have life. I have breath. And I don't want to live this way anymore, unfulfilled. I want to live my life fulfilled. The Word of God teaches us how to get there because man in his sin lost this ability. We don't realize the power that we have with our tongue, that we can actually create our own world. And we see it most evident in Matthew today from the scripture, Matthew 22. with the parable of the wedding feast. Because the whole reason for the Garden of Eden was for God to make a dwelling place <coughs> for His presence. The entire Bible is, is, is written. It is establishing a place for the presence of Almighty God to dwell and to find His bride for His Son. That's what the entire scriptures, this entire book's about. It's about the story of a king who wanted to bring, who wanted to give his son a bride. That's why the church is called the Bride of Christ. We read here that there was a guy that comes into the wedding feast that didn't belong there. And it says, we already read the story. <clears throat> And the king, I'm going to read from verse 11. Okay, verse 10, so you know the context. And so these servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. Did you hear that? That means all of us were welcome to the wedding feast. Oh, well, I think there's some of us that might be good in here, maybe, right? Oh. <laughs> both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw that there was a man which didn't have a wedding garment. Odd. Didn't he just invite everybody in, both bad and good, and then suddenly one guy has to be dressed right? <laughs> I mean, this doesn't make any sense. And he saith unto him, Friend, how comest thou is tither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king unto the servant, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into the outer darkness. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. What does it say? It says that he was speechless. What happened? And the other scripture that we want to reference to is after Adam and Eve fell. In Genesis chapter 4, I believe. They tried to cover themselves, right? With what we think of fig leaves, right? Because they realized they were naked. They were conscious of the fact now that they were naked. But what did God do? He sacrificed an animal took their skins, and he made them skins. So God was the first one to actually kill something in Scripture. And he put on them what? A garment, right? And he put on a covering. Well, here we have again the story of a wedding feast with the covering. And back in the old days, the kings, when they were holding a feast, they would... They would make sure that even their subjects had the right clothes for a feast. They didn't bring everybody in without the right clothes. They always made sure that they had the right clothing so that when they came to the party, they were dressed properly. I mean, who wants to go to a party, a highfalutin party with a king without the right dress on, right? I know Neil wants to always wear the right dress. There you go. <laughs> oh, okay. But how were we covered? If we're going to the wedding feast, and we're going to be properly dressed, the only dress, the only clothes that we have to wear is what? 
is what Jesus did for us on the cross. He clothes us in what? His righteousness. He invited the good and the bad, didn't he? And when the king saw that there was somebody without the clothes, the word says he was speechless. Why was he speechless? What did you create with your world, with what you had to say? Did you confess those things that were not as though they were? Did you believe in the righteousness of Christ in your life, even though all you saw was, I, I just can't seem to get anything right. And the absolute dependence on the righteousness of God in your life. So you see, if we want to go to that wedding feast and have our lives fulfilled, he teaches us how to live in His righteousness, to be clothed in His love. And when we look out into this world of ours and we look at everything that's going on and we realize that what we say is what is going on in our life, our speech has the ability to change our world. What you say and what you do. What you say and what you do. But what's even more important is the recognition that you are not worthy because you have fallen. But because of the blood of Christ at the cross, now you have the ability to come in and be properly clothed as the bride of Jesus Christ. Because not only did man be looking for something to fulfill him, but what was God doing? He was looking for what? He was looking for a bride to do what? To fulfill his son. Think about that. Mankind thinks, oh, especially I think men, I can do it all on my own. It's Sir me, Bob. I'm an autonomy unto myself. <laughs> If you find someone in your life that is distant from other people, it's because they're distant from God in their life. If you see someone that has the ability to, to work with people, you will find them closer to God. Because the closeness to God comes from being where? With others. What was Adam looking for? He was looking for fulfillment. And guess what? The greatest fulfillment is what? It's a marriage. Because what is in you is for somebody else, or for your wife, or for your husband. You learn to fulfill each other as friends, as marriage partners. You learn to fulfill one another. The devil's greatest ploy is to get you away from people, to separate you from people, or to get you in a place where you're judging other people. Because when you judge other people, what do you do? You separate yourself and you make yourself different from them. But what he really wants is to learn to love one another. Because when you've learned to love one another, then what happens? The Word of God says that if you learn to love one another, to forgive one another, and to bless one another, guess what will happen? Your Heavenly Father will do likewise for you. Your Heavenly Father will do likewise for you. You know why? Because you are made in the image and the likeness of Almighty God. So don't be caught speechless. Be caught with the garments that have been put on you because of the blood of Christ. And when you're struggling, be around the people. If you cannot find the presence of God, 
Find the people that fulfill you in the presence of Almighty God. Because in doing so, you reconnect yourself to the body of Christ, to the bridegroom himself. And in doing so, you come to that place where you realize, ah, I'm alive. I have life. We get up every single morning and we go to work. And as you go to work, what happens? You begin to put distance between you and God, don't you? I don't care how hard you try. You're going to find. It's like you're getting sent out of the, of the house. You know what I mean? You get sent out there into the world. And when you get sent out into the world, you get beat up. But when you have hope that when you come back, that you'll come back into the home where the people and the places and the things that you're familiar with, you can connect to, get strength from, to do it all over again. Bless God today that you are alive. Recognize in your life those desires that are unfulfilled or the desires that were not fulfilled properly and you're mad about it. Recognize them and then begin to see these, these patterns that are coming up and rising up all the time in your life and start to put them into the blood of Christ. Start putting him into the proper place. And he says he calls the good and the evil. He calls the good and the bad. But he only is looking for one thing. Are you dressed properly? Are you? Are you dressed properly? Are you dressed in the righteousness of Christ? Because when you're dressed in his righteousness, you know what it means to be righteous? It means to, it means to follow the path. It means to, to, someone who is righteous is one that is on the path. You're following that path. And as you follow that path, what are you going to do? You want to be with Christ? What are you going to follow? He is the righteousness of God, isn't he? So who are you going to follow? Him. In Hebrew, they call it the Zadokim or the Zadok, the one who is righteous, and you follow him. And I always imagine that Jesus is on this goat path, and we're just following along, trying to get, stay on it. And it's winding around. You know, if you go down to uh, Jamaica and you go through the woods, right, what do you see, Chris? A lot of, path. A lot of goat paths, right? Following the goat paths through the woods, you don't know where you're going to go. But these goats know where they're going. <laughs> <laughs> you got to follow the goat. You want to follow the goat? No, you want to follow the lamb. <laughs> they should have lambs in Jamaica. <laughs> about the yellow brick road? Yeah, you got to follow the wizard. Looking for the wizard. Yeah, wanna, okay. <laughs> so pray today that you might learn to understand what you say with your mouth. Okay? What you say with your mouth and you do with your hands. Or what you're always trying to do what with? Fulfill your desires. Do you know that we have the ability as human beings to manipulate the way we talk in order to get what we want? We learned it as little kids. We can think, about how, if I say it this way, we're not even conscious of it that much. We're what they call unconscious competence, right? Or if we do these certain things this way, then I'll be able to get what I want. And what happens when you actually get what you want many times? You're never happy anyway. <laughs> Why? Because you're still looking for something to really fulfill your life. Really fulfill your life. And the only way you're going to do that is by knowing what? The Word made flesh, and that's Jesus Christ. I'm not even telling you to learn the entire Bible. I'm telling you to learn a relationship with Christ. Because you are his bride. And the only way you are truly going to be fulfilled in your life is by knowing him. I mean really knowing him. And the only way you're going to know him is by confessing him. And then clothing yourself in his righteousness. How are you saved? If you confess with your lips and you believe in your heart, doesn't the word of God say, then you will be saved. You see, speech... 
has so much to do with your life. And out of all the animals that are on the face of the earth, out of all the creatures that lived on the face of the earth, guess what? You're the only one that has the ability to articulate with speech. The only one. If you're a monkey, you can go, you know. If you're a tiger, Tiger. Was, that, was that weak tiger? That was a weak tiger. <laughs> Sounded like a cowardly lion. <laughs> but if you're a human being, you have the ability to do what? You have the power of life and death. Where, Chris? Where is it? In the tongue. The power of life and death is in the tongue. That's amazing. Why is the tongue so powerful? Why? Because God gave you a powerful tool to create your life. You know what we do with our lives half the time? I'm no good. <laughs> oh, you're no good. Okay. You've named yourself. Or, I'm the greatest person of all and everybody else is below me. Yes, you are. And they're all going to kill you. <laughs> if those of you who are studying in the scriptures recently with us with the Bible study group, we learned about Joseph. And what did Joseph say? Hey guys, I had this wonderful dream. You were all bowing down to me, even mom and dad. Let's kill this dreamer. <laughs> oh, he's a dreamer. Let's throw him into a ditch. <laughs> See, that's what you learn from scripture. And when you learn it, and you begin to see it, and you begin to see that the universe that you created, that I created, and you're constantly struggling with, what does he ask us to do to recognize it? And guess what the best way to recognize the way your life is going is to have a partner, a friend, a husband, a wife. Guess what happens? They always keep you in check. Oh, so you think you're so wonderful. <laughs> Because the Word of God teaches you are not complete until you have it. Um, is a mistress allowed? No. <laughs> Would you like me to show you a scripture where they did have mistresses and that screwed them up pretty good? <laughs> Just checking, everyone. Just checking. One Just of the guys in Jamaica says to me a couple of months ago, he says, Pastor Leo, he says, can I get one of them concubines? <laughs> That's, I think you're having a hard time just keeping a woman around at all, let alone having one of them. <laughs> no. <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> anyway, so praise the Lord. Take a look at your life. Ask yourself, what are you saying? What are you doing? Take a look. Be conscious of it. And the Word of God says that when God puts you into the garden, this garden, guess what? With all these animals and all these trees, what are you going to eat from and what are you going to call it? You see? And when you eat from it and you call it, guess what the Word of God says? You call it, guess what? You own it. So be careful what you want to own. Bless God today and worship Him for His goodness and His mercy. And may the Lord add a blessing to His Word. Lord, we thank You for Your Word today. For truly Your Word is truth and life to us who find it. Let the anointing of Your Word be upon everyone in this room and help us to recognize, Lord, that not only are we alive, but we have the ability through what we say and what we do to dress ourselves in the right clothes. Let us not be like that man whom the king recognized had the wrong clothes on and be speechless. But Lord, to put on your righteousness and to live in your love. We bless you and praise you. We ask this all in your precious name. Amen and amen. Psalm 46.